Howdy y'all and welcome to another walkthrough video by yours truly Fran Agulta with the developer relations team here at WP Engine focusing on headless WordPress. In today's video I'm super stoked to bring to you cookie policy pop-ups in headless WordPress with Next.js 14 and WP GraphQL. Now, to summarize for those of you that don't know, cookie policies are guidelines and rules that govern how cookies are used on websites to respect user privacy and comply with re legal regulations. In the context of headless WordPress, which involves a decoupled architecture where the front end is separate from the WordPress back end, implementing cookie policies and a pop-up banner involves a few considerations and steps. Now, we're going to take a look at how to implement cookie policy pop-ups in Headless with Next14 and two methods here. So the first one we're going to use is the cookies next npm package with full customization. And the second one is the third party service called CookieBot. Just to quickly let you know for a prerequisite to this video, you got to have a basic understanding of Next.js 14. Headless WordPress, WP GraphQL, some Tailwind styling, and third-party script services. So let's dive right in. Just to start off, I've already installed a WordPress server, downloaded WP GraphQL plugin to make it headless and give me that WP GraphQL API, as well as pulling down a Next.js 14 project in the NPX utility command that it has with the app router method. Now, it's just a simple starter site. I have my WordPress data here with a dynamic route parameter that when I click on the link, it goes to the single post detail page um, within that title of that post, as you can see here. Let's make this bigger on the browser so that you all can see it. There we go. And that's all, that's all it is. It's just a basic starter headless WordPress site. Now the first method I want to take a look at here is with WP GraphQL and the cookies next NPM package. Now this is how users can consent with cookies and implement a cookie consent banner on our Next.js 14 app without a third party service. And let's start by looking at the cookies next NPM package. Next here, there it is. Here's the npm command here, and it's already in my package JSON file. I've already installed it right here. I'm on version 4.1.0. And the first thing we want to do is create a cookie consent.jsx file within the components folder. So let's go to the components folder here within the root of the app directory, and then we'll make a cookie consent.jsx file. At the top of the file, I'm gonna use the use client directive since we're gonna be doing this all on client side. Now, I wanna get my imports in first, so we're gonna use uh, this in the file with the use state and use effect react hooks to manage state and lifecycle. And this is coming from react. Then we're going to have the has cookie and set cookie, which are functions we import from the cookies dash next NPM package we installed like so. And then lastly, we're going to have the link component for client side navigation from Next.js. After the import statements, I'm going to go ahead and define the component and make it the default export of the module. Now I'm going to initialize the state variable. I'm going to call it show consent with the default value of true. And this will determine whether the consent banner should be displayed. Now, after that, let's go ahead and run a use effect hook to perform the side effect to check for the presence of a cookie named local consent and when the component mounts. If the cookie is there, it sets show consent to false, which prevents the banner from popping up. Next, we define a function that will be called when the user clicks the accept button on the banner. It sets show consent to false to hide the banner and sets a cookie named local consent to true 
indicating that consent has been given. Then we have an if statement that says if show consent is true, the component will render nothing and hide the banner. Lastly, I'm going to just copy and paste this JSX and the actual banner on the screen with the onClick handler that accepts the cookie when clicked. Now to sum this all up, the cookie consent component uses local state and effect hooks to manage the display of a cookie consent banner based on the presence of a consent cookie. It provides a message about cookie usage and allows the user to accept the terms which should hide the banner and set a cookie to remember the choice. So let's go ahead and see if this works in the browser. Going over to the browser, I've already spun up the dev server. And there it is. There's our pop-up because we're a new user and the banner is telling us if we should accept or asking us rather if we want to accept these policies. Now let's get stoked and look at using WP GraphQL to get the policy page data from WordPress into Next.js. Back in my code editor here, at the root of the app folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder for the route segment called Privacy Policy. That's what we're pulling from uh, WP GraphQL. So let's call it that. So let me create a privacy dash policy WordPress privacy policy WP folder. And within that folder, this will represent the route and path on the browser. We're going to need to use the Next.js 14 naming convention of calling what will render on the browser a page. So this is the page.jsx file. Now this page.jsx file is a default server component as to what components are by default in Next 14. And then we're going to have our imports at the top of the file. With this file, we're going to need suspense, which comes from React. And then we're going to take get loading. Now, a little bit about suspense. It does come from React and allows other components to wait for something before rendering. It handles the loading state of async operations like data fetching. So in this case, this is what we're doing here is data fetching. And then loading will be our custom component that serves as the placeholder to let us, the user know an operation is in progress. Following these imports, we have an async function that defines the WP GraphQL query to fetch the title and content of a page with the URI privacy policy hardcoded since this is the only page we want to route to. Now, we use the fetch API to make a get request to the WP GraphQL endpoint in our environment variable. The query is URL encoded to ensure it's transmitted correctly over HTTP. After the request, the JSON is parsed and checks if the data is present. Then we have an async component called getPage that fetches the data by calling getPage when rendered with some basic error handling to throw an error if the data is not present. Then we return with the JSX and its format on the page. Now let's go to the browser and see how this looks. Going back to the browser, I'm on localhost 8080 off that port. And then if I just visit that privacy policy WP path, stoked, I'm getting the data from the policy page from the WordPress backend through WP GraphQL onto my Next.js front end. Here it is. All right. Now there are a couple of things just to note and consider when choosing and implementing this method without a third party service like we just did. Uh, it does give you full control and customization on creating your banner and policy page with no cost for a third party service. However, you do have a bit more complexity in keeping up with compliance, testing the functionality and no auto cookie scanning. Which brings me and segues to our next method, which is the client side cookie components with a third party uh, service. In this uh, video, we're gonna use CookieBot. So let's talk a little bit about CookieBot. I have the dashboard up. I've already created an account. And what CookieBot is, is a third-party service that supports website compliance, 
With privacy laws like the GDPR, EPR, and CCPA, it does offer an automated platform that can handle user consent, cookie monitoring, and cookie control. Uh, it enhances websites by providing a consent banner and tracking technology that informs visitors about the use of cookies, secures their consent, and honors their privacy preferences. Now, by integrating with our headless site, it automatically scans and tracks all cookies and similar tracking tech in use, providing detailed reports and ensuring that the website's use of such tech remains transparent and compliant with legislation. Now, this also helps in maintaining an updated cookie policy and declaration, automatically reflecting any changes in the use of cookies on the site. So when using this approach, there's a few factors to consider, which mainly is the cost essentially of the service, limited customizations, and integration complexity. So let's dive into this. The first page in CookieBot that we need to navigate to is within the configuration section here on the main dashboard page. And when we go to configuration, we should see this screen. Now this allows us to set up the UI of the banner. We're gonna use this default setting to show on our Next.js front end um, in this video walkthrough. And then the next page we're gonna need is if we go back to the main dashboard page, just go down to uh, implementation here. And within this implementation, we need this embed cookie bot script, which is the script that contains our data uh, CBID script from CookieBot in order for it to run within our Next.js files. Now let's go back to Visual Studio's code so we can create the files that will help this render on the page. The first thing I wanna do is go to my components folder and we're gonna create a component for this called cookiebot.consent.jsx here, just so that we know it's coming from CookieBot. I'm gonna take some code I've already pre-written and then I'm gonna paste it in here. Okay, and let's go ahead and go over this line by line, uh, not line by line, but just for the important parts because this is very similar to the code we just wrote uh, in the previous section of this video. But in this case, um, we're using CookieBot's its script to render the UI. So let's start at the top. This is gonna be a use client side directive because the component itself is gonna be a client side component as we are using the use effect hook from React to execute the side effects in the component and empty the dependency array, um, which ensures that the effect only runs once after the initial render. And we have the empty uh, dependency array down here. Now, what I really wanna focus on in this component is on the script elements here. So inside our use effect hook, let's focus on a couple of ones here that I've written. Now, what happens is the first thing is we have a variable, a const right here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a new script element called CMP script. And this is where we load the CookieBot script. Now we set all these attributes and the first one I wanna focus on is this one right here. And what this does is it specifies the source of the script pointing to the CookieBot script. And then the second one is the um, set attribute one. And this sets your specific CookieBot ID, which is right here. And then you would place your own CookieBot ID there, uh, your actual CookieBot ID from the CookieBot admin. And then the last one is the uh, set attribute to data blocking mode auto right here. And this sets the blocking mode script for uh, to auto, allowing CookieBot to manage script blocking based on user consent. Now, following the running of these scripts, we append the element right here to the head of the document, which injects the CookieBot script into the page. Following that, we just return and run a cleanup function here. And what this does is it removes the script element from the document head when the component unmounts. And this will prevent any unten unintended side effects. Now notice we're not rendering any JSX in a return statement because what we're actually showing is the CookieBot UI that we chose to. The next step that we need to do is set the consent globally in Next.js. If we go down to the layout.jsx file, we can set this 
cookie bot consent component globally by replacing the cookie consent component that we made without a third party script with the third part uh, third party script cookie bot. So what we're um, what we're going to do is just import cookie bot consent from the components uh, folder and pull out the cookie bot consent uh, file. Then we just simply replace this right here uh, um, in between the children and the footer as cookie bot consent. And now we can test this. Now, before we test this, uh, effectively, we have some options. However, a key requirement is a publicly accessible domain, as well as ensuring cross-domain consistency within a live prod environment. Now, it's important to note that we can't use uh, the dev server localhost 3000 from Next because this is not a viable option for testing. So there's a couple of ways you can do this here. And I wrote an article, and I will leave this in the YouTube description on which options you have. In this video, I chose to um, do the service, um, which is ngrok, basically, which is a tunnel to a public domain to localhost 3000 port. So um, once you choose your method, again, I have ngrok already being spun up here um, within two terminals. Um, one is right here. And then obviously I have the dev server going on another terminal. We just have to go back to CookieBot within our domains and aliases and simply add our domain in here. Once this domain is added, we are connected. Now we have a publicly accessible URL that CookieBot can track. So if I go over to the browser, paste that URL in, which is essentially acting as a tunnel for the Next.js application off port 8080, I should see the CookieBot banner pop up. We are about to visit the site, sure. And boom, there you go. There's the banner and the consent that you need to give this site in order for you to browse it. Stoked. Now, the last thing I want to show you that's pretty cool is just showing the declaration and privacy policy page coming from the third party CookieBot. So let's jump back into Visual Studio Code. And I've already created the uh, files and folders for this. Essentially, what we have here is a cookie bot declaration uh, component that is a client component, very similar to the consent component, except the only script here we're running is the policy page script. That's all, same, same code. And then um, we have a route called privacy policy route segment, which is a folder and then the page.jsx file to render this on the page. And we have that component in between some uh, HTML and JSX. So this should work. Uh, I haven't cut the server. If I go to the site and just visit that path, privacy policy. Sweet, stoked. We've got the privacy policy data coming in from the CookieBot script on the third party service. In conclusion, cookie policy pop-ups are an important part of websites for legal compliance and user transparency and trust. Now, I hope you have a better understanding of how this works in Headless WordPress, focusing on the front end. As always, stoked to hear your feedback and any questions you might have on Headless WordPress, and hit us up in our Discord. Until then, happy coding!